If you're an Android user, chances are you probably use QuickShare, formerly known as Nearby Share, to transfer individual files between devices. But what you probably didn't know is that QuickShare can also send entire folders. That's right, just open up the Files by Google app, select any folder or even multiple folders, and hit the QuickShare button in the top right corner to swiftly send all those files to another device. Even better, they'll maintain their folder structure in the downloads directory, and the best part, no internet connection required. Another thing your Android can do is download multiple apps simultaneously from the Play Store. You can even monitor their download progress right from the home screen through the app's icon on some launchers. Before, the Play Store would only let you download one app at a time, but now you can download two concurrently. Anything past that will still remain on pending, until one of the first pair finishes, but it's still better than waiting one by one. Hopefully in the future though, they can allow us to download even more apps simultaneously, cause that would be a huge time saver, especially when you're setting up a new phone for the first time. In comparison, the iOS App Store can handle three concurrent downloads at once. By the way, if you're enjoying these educational style videos where I explore smartphone features, just drop a quick thumbs up so I know to create more content just like this. Anyway, another cool feature is that if you own a OnePlus, Oppo, Realme, or Xiaomi phone, you can have all your pictures and videos from Google Photos synced up within the Stock Gallery app. That way, you can use the Stock Photo Editors found within those apps instead of using Google's. I even love how fast everything loads and that I can still search each photo by the date even if they're coming from the cloud. And to do this, you simply just toggle on the Google Photos option in the settings of your Stock Gallery app to access this feature. Another neat trick is that within Google Maps, you can now check the weather for any area within this little weather icon in the top left corner. For instance, gliding over Los Angeles will update the current temperature and tapping it will reveal a 12 hour forecast along with the air quality. I can do this for almost every city around the world. To take things even further, if you tap on the layer button, you'll see two new options to let you track the air quality throughout most of the map, and you can see if there are any wildfires near you. It's super useful for any travelers. On top of that, in certain cities like New York, Berlin, Las Vegas, and more, Google Maps now supports a new feature called Immersive View. And this one is crazy, because let's say you want to explore a city and navigate to any specific place. Well, once you type in both addresses, you'll be able to see a multi-dimensional preview of that route from start to finish, complete with buildings, roads, trees, and everything that you'll see if you take that route. What's even crazier is that it'll even show you how heavy the traffic will be and what the weather will be like at any specific time. It's perfect for exploring popular areas remotely or planning outings in advance. Hopefully more cities will be supported in the future as well. Now I'm sure you're all well aware that Google is heavily invested in trying to fill the Android OS with all kinds of AI features. But what you may not be aware of is that there are some hidden AI experiments that you can enable. In the Google app, you can tap on the flask icon in the top left corner to find a secret page called Search Labs. And it houses a variety of AI experiments that you can activate. For example, there's one called Talk to a Live Representative, which allows Google's AI to call customer service numbers for you and wait on hold for you, giving you a call back when a live representative finally gets on the phone. That way, you don't have to sit there listening to awful, annoying hold music. Another experiment called Notes on Search lets you leave notes under Google search results so that you can share your thoughts or read others' opinions about specific pages. You can even customize the note by changing its background, adding stickers, changing the font, and a lot more. It's a pretty cool idea, but it's ending sometime this month, so try it out while you still can. You can also enable this other experiment called Generative AI in Search to provide expanded information on search queries. You definitely need to enable this one because it makes it so much easier and faster to figure out what you're looking for. You can also enable this one called SGE while browsing to let AI generate key points for any article you're reading. That way you can get a general gist of what the story is about. There are a lot more AI experiments where that came from and new ones get added every so often, so keep an eye on this page for new AI experiments from Google. 
The Gboard app also has a few new tricks. My latest favorite is that if you tap on the tiles icon, you'll see a new option called scan text, which as you can probably guess from the title, it lets you use the camera to capture anything in front of you and highlight and transfer any words from that picture. Super helpful for when you want to quickly scan something from a billboard or something of that nature. Just keep in mind that it may not be available for every device just yet since it's still rolling out. What's also been rolling out and I'm super excited about is Google's new Find My Device network. It'll now be supporting third-party Bluetooth tracker tags and you'll be able to use other Android devices to locate the item you're looking for. This crowdsourced network uses over a billion Android-powered devices, including your smart speakers to help you find your belongings, even without an internet connection. And for some devices like the Pixel 8 and 8 Pro, they won't even need to be powered on to be located. It's something that Apple has had for years, but I'm finally glad that Android is jumping on board. The only thing we need to wait on is for more third-party trackers to support ultra-wideband. Plus, I would love to see Google create a competitor to the AirTag. This will be a game changer for Android. I guess we'll have to wait and see for the future. You know, staying focused nowadays is a real challenge. With all the distractions like social media, video games, and short form content, it's easy to feel overwhelmed. And I'll be honest, it's been affecting my productivity, making me feel more anxious, and even messing with my sleep. But then I discovered the Muse S headband, the sponsor of this video, and it's really helped me to improve my attention span. It comes with light packaging that uses eco-friendly material, and opening it up is a really enjoyable experience. Setting it up is also a breeze. You just adjust the headband, snap it around your head, and connect it to the Muse app with a press of a button. The headband carries various sensors that passively measure your brain activity, heart rate, breathing, and body movements. And within the Muse app, you can start different focus attention training and meditation sessions to help you slow down your mind. The headband also tracks your brain activity and provides real-time audio feedback as you meditate or sleep to help you master your mind, enhance your focus, and sleep better. After each session, you can then see all the data collected by Muse. It even has a feature that lets you see a real-time visualization of your brain waves. That way, you can learn how some of your daily activities, like the music you listen to or the people you interact with, affect your mind. The Muse S also provides expert level sleep tracking and goes beyond what most sleep wearables offer by actively helping you fall asleep and stay asleep. It uses an AI algorithm called Digital Sleeping Pills, which adapts to your brain activity and employs smart fate technology to improve sleep quality. So if you're looking to improve your focus, reduce stress, regulate your emotions, improve your sleep, and more, I highly recommend you check out the Muse S headband. Just click the top link in the description to learn more. Trust me, it's worth it. Anyway, another exciting feature a lot of you can look forward to is that on May 15th, many AI photo editing tools previously exclusive to the latest Pixel phones are now going to be made available to every Google Photo user out there. This includes the all new Magic Editor, which lets you reposition any items in a shot, change their size, and even change the look of the sky. The only string attached is that you will need a Google One plan of at least two terabytes, which does cost around $10 per month or $100 per year. On the bright side though, older AI powered editing tools like Magic Eraser, Photo One Blur, and Portrait Light will become free to use. I feel like ever since Apple ditched traditional SIM cards, eSIMs have really taken off. And it's clear that Google is also trying to nudge us in that direction. I'm all for it too, but there are a few things that need to be fixed first. One big issue is how transferring eSIMs can be such a hassle. Unlike regular SIM cards where you can just swap them between phones, every carrier has a different process for eSIM transfers. Some make you call customer support, others need you to download an app, and some even require you to visit their store in person. It's a total headache. But thankfully, Google has stepped up this year by introducing a new eSIM transfer tool for Android. By simply having both devices next to each other, you'll now receive a pop-up menu asking you to scan a QR code to transfer your eSIM. It's a much simpler process and I'm all for it. The only downside is that only a few carriers like T-Mobile support it at the moment, but hopefully more carriers will follow suit. But even when that happens, I still don't think we're quite ready for a full eSIM takeover True readiness will be when eSIMs can be transferred offline between any two unlocked phones 
whether they're iPhones or Androids, without needing any carrier involvement or any restrictions on how many times you can transfer. This next one may not seem as exciting, but it's definitely something you should know about. As of last year, Google quietly released a new feature called Ad Privacy, which helps protect your identity and gives you more control over how advertisers show you ads. By default, your Android keeps track of your topics you're interested in based on the apps you use. Plus, your installed apps can also store information about your interests and later on use this info to show you relevant ads. But you can stop this invasion of privacy by heading into the settings, tapping on Google, then ads, add privacy, and turning everything off. Another thing your Android does is use Google Play Protect to periodically scan every app you've installed for malware. It doesn't even matter if they were installed outside the Play Store. But recently, Google announced that they're making Google Play Protect even more powerful with real-time scanning at the code level to better combat malicious apps. And this code level evaluation is super helpful if you tend to download apps outside the Play Store, because that's how most malware gets injected into people's phones. On top of that, Google also created another security measure to automatically scan for any deceptive apps that may try to do a phishing attack. That way it can help you from giving away any vital information to apps that may be trying to scam you. And the Lord knows we need this because phishing attacks are getting pretty sophisticated nowadays. Currently, it's only available in a beta version of Android 14 though, but you can try to see if you have it by heading into the settings, security and privacy, more security and privacy, and towards the bottom, there may be a new menu called scanning for deceptive apps. With every recent Android update, Google keeps turning this feature on and off. It's called predictive back animations, and you can find it within the developer options if you're on Android 13 or higher. It's a pretty useful feature because it essentially enhances the back gesture for certain apps by giving you a sneak peek of the previous page before fully going back. That way, you know exactly where you're jumping back to. And being that it's been around for a few years, a lot more apps have supported it. If you wanna see a list of supported apps, I'll leave a link to a list that someone made right below the like button. Anyways, tap this video right here to check out a list of my favorite customization apps for this month. If I helped you learn something new in this video, a quick thumbs up would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for making it to the end and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!